Hey, good morning, church. This is Pastor Ryan. What did you dream about last night? Do you remember? If you're like me, you probably forgot all your dreams by the time you got your first cup of coffee in the morning. I read somewhere that we forget 90% of our dreams in the first five minutes since waking up in the morning. Now, some people, they keep a dream journal next to their bed so they could write down all their wild and crazy dreams from the night before and to think back on them, to reflect on them. I've never done that. Frankly, I'm far more interested in getting to breakfast than to rehashing my dreams from the night before. But every once in a while, we get um, a nightmare or we get some wild fantasy that sticks with us all day long whether we want it to or not. Now, in today's scripture from Isaiah chapter 6, the prophet Isaiah has a really wild dream. Isaiah dreams about God's robe overflowing the temple in Jerusalem. And Isaiah sees angels that he calls seraphim that fly around with six wings and um, they sing praises to God. And Isaiah dreams that one of these angels, one of these seraphim, takes a coal, a burning coal, and touches it to his lips in order to make him clean again. Now, there's no way that Isaiah is ever going to forget this oracle, this incredible dream, this prophetic vision from God. This was a divine answer to prayer. And this heavenly dream would follow Isaiah for the rest of his life and shape the way that he prayed to God. Now, I suspect that Isaiah wrote down the details of this wild dream in order to help us know how to pray better. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8 gives a pretty clear outline of what biblical prayer looks like. It's not the only way that uh, prayer is biblical. There's lots of biblical models for prayer, but this is pretty consistent with a lot of other parts of the Bible that teach us how to pray. First, the prayer begins with praise to God. Um, always a good place to begin in prayer. Second, prayer moves to confession of sin. Third, the prayer moves to the reception of God's forgiveness. And fourth and finally, the prayer sends us back into the world to participate in the purposes of God. This morning, we are going to learn how to pray like Isaiah. Now, first point, Prayer begins with praising God. Now, we recently concluded 155 days of studying the Psalms during our daily devotionals at Bethany Covenant Church. And you might have noticed as we're going through that series, I don't expect everyone saw every single one of those devotionals, but you might have noticed if you tuned in with us at all, that the Psalms often begin with the praise of God. Psalm 23 begins with, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 91 says, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 27 begins, The Lord is my light and my salvation. If you're ever struggling to find the right words to begin a prayer with, to God, try this. Just start singing God's praises. Or if you don't want to sing, just start saying wonderful things about God. Oh God, you are my Savior. Oh God, you uh, are, are the, the Lord of the world. Oh God, you created the world and all that's in it. Whatever comes to mind, it's a good place to start with praise. Now, Isaiah's heavenly vision also begins with praise. And as God's robe fills the, the temple in Jerusalem, in this dream, in this vision, the angels, the seraphim, they start singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. This is praise. And the doors of the temple in Isaiah's dream, they shook from all that singing. And the temple was filled with the smoke of incense from worship. And Isaiah dreamed of heaven descending to earth as all of God's people worship together. Isaiah 6 verses 1 through 4, they teach us that only God is worthy of praise. No one else. Only God is worthy of praise. I really miss singing together in church. 
Can I get an amen in the comment section below? I really miss singing together in church. We still sing online uh, in these services that you're watching right now, and we still have worship music when we gather for our in-person services, but we're very careful about singing because we know that singing really spreads COVID-19. We know this to be the facts, and so we're trying to care for one another. We're trying to care for our community to the best of our knowledge. Now, I know I'm not the only one who's sad that we're not singing together in church right now, but let us be clear. Those hymns and praise songs, they were never intended for us. They were never for our entertainment. They were never for our pleasure. They were always for the glory of God. Remember that. The point of worship is not that I get my way. It's that I honor and praise God's name. We sing hymns. We sing praise songs not to please ourselves and not to please others but to honor God alone. Now, right now, we are pleasing God. We are praising God by taking special care of each other in this time of disease. We are praising God by wearing masks in order to protect our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we are praising God by financially supporting the church and its missionaries. And we are praising God by joining the online Bible studies, even if we aren't comfortable with computers so much. And we are praising God by taking care of our vulnerable friends. And we may not get to worship exactly the way we want to right now, but that does not mean that we cease our praise of God in all that we say and all that we do. This is righteous praise of God. Number two, um, this prayer of Isaiah, it includes confession. Now, uh, the book of Isaiah covers a lot of ground before we get to today's vision, right? Um, the prophet Isaiah, in the first five chapters of the book, has already declared judgment on Jerusalem and Judah. And Isaiah has already pronounced woe on the wicked and the greedy and the liars and the arrogant and the unjust. And then suddenly, in chapter 6, Isaiah is suddenly aware of his own sin. Woe to me, Isaiah declares. I am ruined. As John Calvin aptly put it, Isaiah is reduced to nothing. When was the last time you said, woe is me? When was the last time you were reduced to nothing before God? When was the last time you confessed your sins to God? Now, when we are in the presence of God, we should all be uncomfortably aware of our own sin. Only someone who has never met God would dare suggest that he has no sins to confess. This is why confession is such an important part of our prayer life. This is why Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Jesus wanted us praying that all the time. Not just for the sins we committed before we became Christians, but because we are all human beings. We all continue in our sin, and we need the Holy Spirit to redeem us. We keep on praying for forgiveness because no one ever graduates from human fallibility until the resurrection. What do you need to confess to God this morning? I think of our whole nation and how we need to repent from anger and division, myself included. I think of our whole church that we need to repent for failing to show um, that we are Christians by our love, myself included. And I think a lot of us need to repent for letting ourselves be carried away by anxiety instead of trusting the Lord, myself included. And I think a lot of us need to repent for insisting on our own way instead of submitting to one another in love, myself included. Let's just pause in the middle of this message and let us privately confess our sins before God. Then 
the prayer of Isaiah third moves to forgiveness. Um, and Isaiah's dream, um, it, it does sound a little bit like a nightmare, doesn't it? A, an angel with six wings takes a burning coal from the sacrificial fire and he carries it in his hand to touch Isaiah's lips with it. If I dream something like that, I would wake up in a cold sweat, right? Uh, fire burns, fire destroys, fire also cleans. And the angel tells Isaiah, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. No, Isaiah was not having a nightmare about torture, angelic, divine torture. No, Isaiah was given a vision of God's grace and forgiveness, and it can sting a little bit, forgiveness, but it heals and makes clean. When we do not confess to God in prayer, we do not experience God's forgiveness in prayer. A lot of us would prefer to skip the step of honest self-assessment and to jump ahead to the, re the easy reassurances of forgiveness, right? And the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, also a conspirator against the Nazis, he called this cheap grace. Have you ever heard that phrase before? Bonhoeffer writes, cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. It's baptism without church discipline. It is communion without confession. It is absolution without personal confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ, living and incarnate. End of his quote you will never know the high price of God's grace without being honest about your sin. Repent and believe the gospel and discover the power of God's grace that only comes in fullness when we are honest about our sin. Fourth and finally, Isaiah's prayer includes commission. So it begins with praise, it includes confession, it includes forgiveness, and it includes, at the end, a commission, a call, a sending forth. Now, Isaiah had a powerful dream about prayer and worship, but Isaiah didn't just stay in bed forever, snuggled under the covers, staying warm in this cold world. No, Isaiah dreamed that the Lord spoke to all his angels and to all his worshipers, in all the world, in all of creation, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And full of the confidence of one who just had his sins taken away. Isaiah was bold enough to volunteer. Here am I, send me. And at the end of the dream, Isaiah was motivated to get out of bed and get to work, to get moving to bring the good news of God's salvation to a world desperately in need. Now, prayer, it's not an alternative to good work. It's not uh, you pray and I'll go do other good stuff, or you do good stuff, I'll just stay back here and pray. It's not an alternative. When we spend time with God in prayer, we are motivated to get to work loving our neighbors, even loving our enemies. And prayer changes who we are. It sends us out to change the world. When we are changed, we become part of God's change for the world. An effective prayer life changes not just our lives, but the lives of everyone around us, which is why whenever we talk about evangelism, I always say, let's pray for these people first uh, to get our heart right with God, but also because we know that this is a work of God. Or when we pray about doing new good deeds in the community, um, taking on new missionary endeavors. We pray about it first. Why? Well, we, we want to make sure that God is sending us, that we are commissioned by God to go do these things. So my question for you is, where is God sending you this morning? Is it to share your faith with your grandchild? Bathe it in prayer. Is it to go care for the homeless? Bathe it in prayer. Is it to feed the hungry? Bathe it in prayer. Is it to rebuild a relationship with an old friend that you're kind of upset with right now because you disagree about politics. Well, pray about it first. 
or is it about coming back to worship in the sanctuary uh, right now in this time? Well, pray about that first. But now let's just close this message with a word of prayer. Lord God, we glorify your name. You are the maker of heaven and earth. You are the only one is, who is holy. You are the only one who is worthy of our praise. We confess today, Lord God, that we don't always submit to one another in love, that sometimes we want to insist upon our own way. We ask, Lord God, that you forgive us for our sins. Take that which is wrong in us and make it right in you. And send us out in the world to work together for the sake of your kingdom. And that others will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord God, give us a passion for helping our friends and neighbors and even our enemies know that we are Christians by our love and by sharing with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all.